lamp, okay? So a lot of people will call this the light, but it actually has a name and it's called the lamp, okay? The lamp has parts, it has handles, it has an on-off switch, and it has an arm, okay? And I say that to you because sometimes you might grab the arm and move it around, sometimes you might grab it by the handle, and when you're doing infection control and cleaning, you're responsible to make sure that this whole apparatus is dust-free, because you'd hate to have the lamp go in front of the patient and then like dust start falling off of it, okay? So you're gonna need to know the different parts. So this is the lamp, the handles, the on-off switch, and the arm, okay? Here's your dental um, chair. Your dental chair can be um, manipulated either by a foot pedal, and the foot pedal tells you about up and down, or by the buttons on the back of the chair, okay? So those buttons can go up and go down, the patient can go back. Oh, that one looks like it just goes, is automatic. We know that this one goes back, it's so slow. Sometimes they're pre-programmed, so you press a button and it automatically goes into the position that you want it to go into, okay? And then there's um, a return button that will bring the chair up and down to exactly where you might want it to be. And just to stop that return, you can hit the um, control panel on, uh, buttons on the floor or the control panels on the back of the chair. So when we cover this chair up, we're gonna be using a chair cover that's gonna come right about here, okay? Some offices might have um, barrier tape that would cover this up because this is something that you're gonna to touch and anything that we touch, we usually cover, okay? So either the whole chair will be covered or in some offices, they'll just have a headrest cover and then they'll have a barrier tape over the, the, the control panel. All right, the arm swivels out so that your patient can get in, okay? And then the arm will swivel back. So that's important for you to know, so for patient comfort, because, you know, trying to squeeze into this arm, you can easily just set the person down and then they can turn around and then you can move the arm. All right, so that's your arm. This is an operator's stool, and that's a dental assisting stool. And they're called stools, they're not called chairs. Okay? So you can see they look a little different, don't they? Okay, so an operator stool just has a back. A dental assistant stool has an abdominal bar. This is called an abdominal bar, okay? And that's because when a dental assistant sits here, they sit like this and then the abdominal bar comes across. So they're gonna scoot themselves back. And then they're gonna put their feet on this bar so this whole chair is gonna come up. The dental assistant should be about, about um, a few feet higher than the dentist, about two feet higher than the dentist, okay? So the patient's gonna be laying down. You're gonna be about, about two feet higher than, the, than the, the dentist in the operating space because you're gonna be handing the instruments over and you're gonna be suctioning and coming from a downward direction. So this chair is actually a little low, so my feet cannot go on that bar, but it should be adjusted to your height so that when you sit down, your feet can go on that bar, your bottom is all the way back so you have good ergonomics and then this comes across. So if you have to lean, you have something to lean on, okay? So that is your dental assistant stool and your operator. Okay. Then comes the delivery unit like I was talking about earlier. The part of the delivery unit is this piece on the floor called the rheostat. The rheostat is what makes all of these drills, you guys know them as drills, they're also known as hand pieces work. Okay, I'm gonna see if So this unit has an on-off switch somewhere. Okay. Most units have a little switch right under, right under here that turns it on and turns it off. I think the older ones, are these newer ones? They used it. to be right here, right? <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Maybe that's it. Can you look at that unit and see if they have an auto switch? Yeah. Nope. There used to be a little switch here that would turn the unit on and off. And you may have that in your office, and that's on the, on the skills. Did you find it? 
Oh no, that little toggle is for water. Okay, so if that little toggle is hitting, is turned towards me, there's a little blue dot there. That means that water is gonna come through these hoses. If I turn it this way, that means there no water will come through. Because it's just a compressor, and that's what makes the drills move, is the high compressed air. So we would put a slow speed or a high speed hand piece on these, and the dentist or the hygienist would push that button, the compressed air comes through and moves the drill bits inside the drill, and that's how the drill works. So sometimes when we're drilling on a tooth, we need to use water. So that's why being a dental assistant or a dental hygienist, when we use water, that aerosol mixes, well the water mixes with saliva, blood, whatever we're working on in the oral environment and becomes an aerosol, these tiny little droplets that are in the air and that's what we breathe in. So that's why we have to wear our masks and our shields to just keep us from breathing in all these little aerosols to get us sick. Um, that's why being a, uh, a dental assistant or a dental health care worker is really risky right now. It's like one of the highest, highest risk professions out there because we are exposed to um, aerosols all the time, all day long, just by the nature of what we do. So that's why we have to wear these, all of our PPE. But I think that the dental hygiene unit school must have gotten new units because literally there was a little switch here that looked just like that switch. And it, you would turn it on and turn it off. So we might have to skip that piece on the skill sheet, okay? Okay. All right, this is the air water syringe, okay? And this is what makes air and water. All right, the water's not on because they have a separate water reservoir right here. And if you see these white bottles that are over here on the sink, those are what the, um, we put water in those white bottles and then they're connected to this hose and then water can come through the unit, okay? The air water syringe goes on like this. There's a little button that you press down and you can push in your air water syringe. And this will allow you to blow air on the tooth as the doctor's walk working. And then when the water is hooked up, water comes through and then you can rinse. So if the doctor's drilling or extracting or whatever the doctor might need some water for, that's the air water syringe, okay? Or to dry something off. Then your two hand piece handles here, one is for slow speed, one's for high speed, okay? These are just hand piece ports. And if I, if I try to get both of them to work at the same time, I won't be able to. Oh no, boy, they really are making a liar out of me today, aren't they? Normally, when you take these out of here, there's these little switches right here. So now both of them are out. One shouldn't work, one should and one shouldn't. And in some offices, neither one of them would work because you took both of them out at the same time. So to troubleshoot that, you would put one back and then the other one would work. But it looks like with this particular unit, they both seem to want to work for us, which is unusual, it's not normal, okay? This is our high-speed suction, okay? So this is what the dental assistant will use a lot of, okay? The dental assistant will use the high-speed suction most of the time. And then this is the HVE tip, so the high-speed suction tip. And you put the tip onto the handle. We'll turn the suction on so you guys can hear what the suction sounds like. All right, that's the high-speed suction. And then we have the low-speed suction, which is the saliva ejector. <laughs> I'm having a bad day. This one doesn't want to go back in there. Didn't I literally just take it out of there? Maybe they I think to, it oh, was I had to push, I had to push. Okay, and this is the saliva ejector. And so it's a slow speed suction and you put the saliva ejector tip on. And what's cool about this is that you can bend it. Okay, so some people bend it like a question mark, some people bend it like a seven, some people lay it flat like this and bend it so that it lays inside the patient's cheek. Okay, but this will, will literally just suck up the saliva. This is used when the dentist is doing restorative. So when that, when that drill is going and the dentist is um, drilling through the tooth and removing tooth structure, decay and amalgam, whatever they're doing, you're right there with that high speed suction, suctioning that all out. Well, this sticks in the corner of the mouth, making sure nothing goes down their throat, okay? And then in hygiene world, when a dental hygienist is cleaning people's teeth, we use this most of the time inside their mouth and the patient sometimes likes to hold on to it. Um, if they don't want to hold on to it, we can just configure it so that we can lean it without dragging on their cheek. Okay. So, and then the last piece is your cuspidor. All right. And um, this is the cuspidor liner. So in some offices, they'll have a little sink where that you can spit out, okay? Um, here they don't. So you would pick this up and you would hand it to the patient. They would spit into it. 
Okay, you would turn the high speed suction on, that's all it is, with the high speed suction with the funnel, and then you would turn it off and you would throw this away and you would clean this out, okay? And I want you to wear gloves, okay, because what you see, any kind of paint that's disclosing solution. So dental hygienists use that to show patients where the plaque is on their teeth. Okay, so if you've been brushing your teeth and you think you did a good job, you can put some disclosing solution in there and any plaque that's left over will shine out paint. So we use that sometimes as a tool to help with oral hygiene instruction where we'll disclose first and say, Mr. Smith, you know, look where all this plaque is. Now go ahead and brush your teeth. See how you just removed all that paint. I'm sure you probably have heard of this done. Gosh, when I was growing up in school, they used to have us do it in schools. Um, and Listerine has something called like a detector mouthwash where you could have your kids rinse with it and any plaque on their teeth will turn green and then you can watch them brush it off. It's the same concept. But so there, there's pink down in there, okay? So I don't want you touching any of that. And there's still, I see a little splatter of pink over here. So I don't think that got wiped down as well as it could have been. Okay, so that's why I want you to use gloves. But that is the dental unit. Can you do me a favor and look at our um, yeah, so list? Yes, the only other Did thing is the, this okay. moving. Okay. And then the, this is specifically called handpiece tubing. Handpiece tubing. I have to get the words right because that's what you'll be testing on. Okay, so the handpiece tubing, and these are the ports where the hand pieces would go in, okay? And then the rheostat is really important for you to know because without the rheostat, none of this stuff is going to work. Okay, because when you press that button, that's what the compressed air goes through. Okay, and then our headrest. So our headrest can move here. We pinch it and we can move it up and down and back and forth. And in some cases, this whole thing can come out. So when we're working with children, sometimes we'll take the whole headrest cover, or the, I mean, not the cover, the whole headrest piece out of the, let's see if it will come out easy. See how it can come just slide right on off. So the child can sit down and not have be bumping into this. If you have somebody super tall, then you can raise it up, okay? Average size person, somebody short, and then again, you can pinch it so that the patient's head can go back or go forward. But that's really nice so that you can get it exactly how um, the dentist wants it, okay? And it goes in the back of the neck right here, okay? So they're, they're, this part of their head isn't there, but the back of their neck is here because it supports them up and down this way. Okay, so did I hit everything? Perfect. Yeah, all, right. all good.